welcome to another of the calyx gardens this is our interior courtyard garden and you'll have to look very closely to see that most of the plants are in pot so it's actually a container garden and it gives you an idea of the versatility of container gardening depending on the size of the pot it can be either a small patio garden or something that looks as if it's out outdoors so let me show you around and give you a few pointers as to how we managed to get this look from containers in about a two-year period. As we enter the courtyard garden from the back garden, the first thing that meets your eye is this trellis. This was one of the first things that was established here in order to give the plant something to grow upon, to give the depth to the garden. And what, what you see running on the trellis is pink Pandora. We'll soon get to a flower. It really grows very quickly. It is sharing the space with another plant, the alamander. When we, we'll get a better view of the alamander from another location. But let's take a look at the smaller plants that meet the eye also. We do a combination of low-lying plants. This heather makes a very nice mini border this small bed gets more sunlight than the others so we put plants in this area that do fairly well in the sunlight and from this vantage point you if you cast your eyes down you'll see one of our better crotons we have named that croton rusty because rusty really does show up a brilliant rusty color in the full sunlight. It's a nice backdrop to this little area. Continuing along, I want to point out some of the initial, what we call the foundation plants, and but they're all in pots, remember. This is a variegated dwarf ficus. We have several, se several of these plants scattered around for emphasis, because especially later in the evening, the off-white colors really show up in the semi, in low light conditions. This is a dwarf, as I say, and we try to train it into a topiary, a nice rounded shape. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good so far. At the base of the ficus is a mondo grass. They're about, we have a few of these. Again, because of the light color, it does show up very well in the low light conditions in the afternoons, in the evenings. Plant in the steps. This is a, a nice urn but the focal point in the urn is a clusia and clusia at this point this is March clusia is not bearing but I'm sure we can find a bloom to show you what clusia looks like and in any garden you'll appreciate that if you take a snapshot there will be some plants that are blooming and some plants that are not we have mixed very well I think the a combination of blooming plants and plants with interesting foliage and at this point clusia is it's not clusia's blooming time you will notice there are quite a few anthurium plants here in this space we have a range of colors this is a very nice purple quite fragrant also we have i think the ones that really show up most is the obakis these very large blooms three months ago Every obaki in this garden, in this section of the garden, was in full bloom. The anthuriums really give this space a deep tropical look. And what we really, really want to highlight is the fact that the lilies are now, they've just started to bloom. And this one, give it another day, what, another two or three days, and it should be in all its glory. Continuing this tropical feel, standing guard over the lilies as it were, we have a selection of four Salhorn ferns. Different types, if you look closely, they, they have a different leaf arrangement, but as a backdrop to the wall as you enter, it does give that exotic feel to the space. Ferns propagate from, sp from spores and in the event you see this brown spot at the tip of your 
stag horn fern leaves. There's nothing wrong with it. These are the spores. These are where the spores are born on the stag horn fern. All right, the belly, well known plant species for low light begonia, another species of, of begonia. This is the butterfly begonia. It has been blooming non stop in this exact location for about two years. So we really like this one here. I had mentioned the pink pandora and here is a lovely bloom just coming through to greet us and say hello. There are several other blooms around. Uh, who wouldn't want something as exotic as this in their garden? This is elephant ear alocasia and remember they're all in pots so soon I will be propagating and spreading this around. I think I have three plants in this space and uh, doing well as a backdrop. Another tropical, well-known tropical plant is Heliconia. This is a dwarf variety and oh there's several blooms in the in the bushes there. And over the Heliconia to carry the theme of red Take your eyes upward as you look at red. This is quite a big plant of what we call pussil. <laughs> there are so so many types of aurelias, but this pine leaf one I really like. And what I'm trying to do, what I have been doing for the last move, I think about it's about a year old now. I'm training it in an upright columnar shape. I expect it to get to the top of the house, at which point I'll top it and it will be a column. And talking about trees, one thing, we have set out this um, courtyard as you would any other landscaping space. So you need a combination of small plants, tall plants, things that take the, your eye around the space. And the tallest species we have in here are palms. And again, remember that all of these are in containers, but the bigger the pot, the bigger the plant. This is a foxtail palm. The one you see at the lower level is about a year older. We're not sure if it can get any bigger, but it is, I would think at least 10 feet tall now. Hey, looking in the opposite direction, and as the camera pans, this really is the view you'll get from the main, from the home. So without coming to the outdoor, you can stay inside and see a very natural looking flow of plants from the taller plants up there, coming down to the plants, the very beautiful, colorful plants in your immediate vision. And just to point out that this entire space really was built, is built on top of a garage. There is no soil, there is no lawn, so as I said, to create the kind of ambiance you want in your interior courtyard requires a careful selection of plant types. Before I go further, I'm sure you would have noticed these crown of thorns. We have about three different types, but we really like these. They stay here all year. They're very drought tolerant and they bloom continuously. But these really have been the pride of the, the garden for the last, I would say, four or five months. Okay, so we are now in the sunny section of the patio. The upper section that I just left really is the cooler, more protected area. We went for, we're going from there into this exposed area because there are times when you really don't, don't want anything above your head. You want to just enjoy this the view of the sky and in this area we've selected those plants that are really really tolerant to full sunlight bougainvillea being the prime or prime species here for full sunlight it it has been blooming continuously it's alongside the crown of thorns and the palms are the species that do very well here in the interior courtyard in full sun Another type of bougainvillea, the Kenyan sunset. 
we have a spectacular example of it which we will cut in because it's in another location but you've never seen a Kenyan sunset as spectacular as the one I'm going to show you next. From this vantage point you have a full view of the trellis and soaring above the, the trellis is the original plant, the alamander, purple alamander. That will take it about 15 feet into the air above the trellis and it really keeps blooming year round, sets the tone for a really nice lively show, especially from afar. If you look up, even above the gazebo, you will see the alamander in full splendor. Continuing the look of the palms and the tropical setting, this is Washingtonia, Washingtonia fan palm. This is Sago. Sago palm, but we know it's not a palm. Sago is actually a cycad, one of the older uh, plants in the plant kingdom. It is. It has sat there holding its dark green color forever. Above this sago, you will see white bougainvillea, and it's nestled within the limbs of a avocado tree and the avocado tree has just started its fruiting cycle if you look closely you will see the tiny avocados getting ready it's March they will be ready in by June the other palm we have what, three three big pots of areca palm nice bushy areca palm when it's in full sunlight it has this golden color when it's in the semi shade or more shade it gets greener. So the one up on the patio is in shade and it is nice, big, lush, but not as golden as the one here in full sun. We call this foxy. Foxtail palm. Yeah, it's only five and a half. That makes it 12 feet up in the air. So it's not going anywhere, it cannot go anywhere, but it's one of the palms that really anchors this space and makes it really hot. And this is the indoor area of the courtyard, otherwise called our outdoor living space, spend a lot of time here. The plants that were selected for this area are adapted to relatively, to medium to low light condition because it is a covered area. And for that, we selected ferns. We have two very nice, and the whole idea is to give it, give you some privacy in this area. There are neighbors around, yes, but when you sit here, you really still want to feel that you are in the garden. So the big, bigger hanging baskets do that. It gives you the protection or the privacy from the upper levels of the courtyard. Curtains. Now, curtains do very well in full sunlight, but if you move them slowly into a highlight area indoors, they will continue looking well. Maybe not as colorful as those in full sunlight, but these we have here do serve the purpose of providing a privacy screen as well as some color in the, this covered section of the patio. Another plant that does very well in relatively low light condition, this is the holly. Asparagus fern, again giving you the upper level um, foliage, really is uh, tolerant of light conditions, medium light conditions, but it does best in full sun. A plant that is fully a low light condition, aglaonema. It snug, snuggles right between these two plants and it is fine. This is a pigweed jasmine. This lower section of the courtyard, the plants that we selected here, 
is to uh, to give you the impression as you enter that whoa, this is almost like a, a natural outdoor garden. So again, the large pots, the shrimp plant gives you the color year round. The bamboo, fine leaf bamboo, introduces a finer texture. It's right next to the dracaena. This dracaena, perfect position. So you have a you select plants that give you something that softens the area and can give you the privacy and camouflage some of the things that should not be visible immediately on entering. And finally, nestled in between the shrimp is this lovely trailing rice and peas. It's a clerodendron. And this here just takes your eye into the plant and wondering, what is it doing there? So this is the end of the tour of a, actually a three compartment interior courtyard. You have the lower level, entry level, whereas you come in, you get the feel that there is some drama here. There are lots of big plants when you would not expect because you re this is really all on man-made structures. So selecting plants, growing them to the size that really serves a purpose of giving you a comfortable family oriented space that is private that you can have different moods you have the full sunlight area when you just want to stare at the sun or get a suntan you have the family dining area which is private secluded you have the i would want to call it the forest feel it takes your eye up takes in the outdoors and make you really feel comfortable, rested, relaxed. So what we're trying to show you here is how you can use plants to really create the kind of space that you enjoy, to make the best of your location. If you have a small area, you will be using smaller pots, but the same things apply. You select your colors, you select the plants that are uh, suitable for your location and for your purpose. So as we go, for, go on sh showing you more of these settings, we will go into further details of, in how you can achieve this kind of look. Interior landscaping contributes a lot to the beauty and value of our living spaces. There's a lot to unpack here, which we will do in subsequent videos. So that's it for now.